Hey guys, how's it going? It's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history living in your aquarium. What's up, Pete? I see that you are in here. How's it going? Down under, as they say. I consider, you know, New Zealand, Tasmania, Australia, Papua New Guinea, all that's down under. So, how's everybody doing tonight? As you trickle in, I will uh, kind of begin the the show. Uh, I guess we've got some big changes going on in here. And uh, one of them, I did something real dumb. And, uh, you know, once you start doing... Hello, animal lover number one. Hello, my friend, and welcome. So, I got some new fish today. I've got a pair of beta macrostomas which i'm really excited to show you guys and then i got a trio of rams blue german rams and a flag fish and then uh got rid of some fish traded some fish off and made up some room and then i did something silly and so i'm going to tell you about all that uh fent Cantu, hello how's it going uh so let's just start off what is can anybody spot the difference in this tank here? All right. So, compared to normal, what is the difference in this tank? Do, 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 do. Yeah, there's like no fish in it, right? So I moved a bunch of the fish in this tank downstairs into the 40 breeder. Um, there are still, there's plecos, there's, uh, the reed tetras, uh, at least like a, I don't know, half dozen or more of them in here. And then there, uh, are my cribs. My cribs are in here. I decided cribs aren't getting their own 10 gallon downstairs. Cribs are going to stay right here. Cribs have been breeding here just fine. And they're going to stay here. So if you remember, I had a big Angelfish named Sergio. What became of Sergio, we'll show you shortly. But Sergio had worms all of a sudden. And I could see them when he'd go to the bathroom. You could see it was gross, little red stringy things uh, when he went to the bathroom and they were moving. So I got some Levamisol. Well, I had a bag of it and I had my scooper. And I literally scooped and poured, scooped and poured uh, these little fractions of a teaspoon. And uh, as I was doing that, the bag folded over on itself and a bunch poured into the tank. So, one, I shouldn't have been holding the bag over the tank. Like, you should dose it out somewhere aside. Yeah. So, I've had a bad bad uh bad <laughs> luck this month but this was just another thing the good thing was i saw it happen right away so first thing i did was i moved around stuff i moved these rocks around they're not so much caves anymore so i'm gonna redo this scape i think at some point i don't know there's a lot of things i want to redo in the tanks uh but now we've got all this room in this tank and it's uh a little over 40 it's a custom uh it's not just that normal bow front that's a 38.5 or whatever the norm was uh and it's a little taller than most of the bow fronts in this size range so uh the cribs are in here they've got their little their little uh hideaways in here uh, I wouldn't be surprised if one is in there right now. Uh, and then there are also some green dragons. And, oh, there's a, a, a crib right now. Just, there it is right there. There's a male crib hanging out. I don't know where the female's at. She's somewhere, I'm sure. But, uh, and then there's the super red pluck. Oh, there's the female crib right there. So, they're just hanging out, doing their thing. Uh... I had them in the little tank downstairs, decided I didn't want to do what I was what what my first plan was. So over here, tank's pretty loaded. I did add a couple of these wild class endlers. Now they're not caught out of the wild, you know. What they are is they were caught out of the wild at one point, they were left in a pond, and then they got these traits. And supposedly they're a straight endler strain that I had and uh I'm just going to let them do their thing. 
I think the angelfish may eat the babies. I don't know. Just, I, I love the way that those endlers look. So we're going to just let them do their thing and see what happens. I've hidden more caves in here. Uh, there's one there. There's a couple back here, including the one that this uh, guy is guarding. So uh, he may have eggs in there. I don't know. He's been flapping and guarding it for a while. And uh, let's see what else is going down in this tank. It's getting pretty big. The red star Ludwigia is getting really tall. And over here, we've got German blue rams. Now, they're kind of devoid of color because they're stressed at the moment. Uh, just like this female Endler is with those two boys chasing her around. But I just love the way those boys look. Don't you guys, don't you think those are cool looking uh, markings? So, in any case, I hope I can get more of that line. It was kind of a fluke, but it that that's what came out of mixing a couple different wild lines together years ago. And they've just been sitting in at the top of the water in my 40 breeder for a while. And since I had two that looked alike, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to toss them in. We'll see what happens. Uh, Shauna Gardner, what is up? Uh, Muppet, hello, animal lover. Uh, Sergio is downstairs, don't worry. Chase, how's it going? Uh, Sandy, um, Pandy, hello. Jay's better room. Mojave Lorax, I like that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, so Chase, I had a like, like a freaking kilo of Levamisol that I got from a friend in the hobby, and that was the problem. I was holding the bag right here. And I don't know why I was so dumb on that other tank, but it folded over on itself if I were holding this low, and it spilled out of the top. So they got, like, 50 times the dose they should have gotten. I immediately went in and started getting them. I had a SAE that was six and a half inches long pass away. I had some little Tetras pass away, and I lost... A couple little rasboras and oddball critters that were in there. I was able to get all the panda, or sorry, I was able to get all of the leopard plecos out. They're doing fine. Leopard frogs, they're they're coming out and eating actually a lot. So there's this one there, and then there's another one. It looks like the same one, but it's actually this other side of the rock back by that loganondra pink. And then uh, there's the big one. The big male is actually back right under there so they're all doing their thing i'm starting to get black beard algae which makes me angry hulk smash so i got a florida flag fish where's he at shout out to my homeboy florida flag fish uh probably not going to be able to stem the tide of this uh bath of blood hey look more baby corridors these guys just keep having babies in this tank so this tank's getting pretty full. Uh, really mad that the black beard is just growing like crazy right now. I'm going to cut the light back a bit. Might actually spot treat with hydrogen peroxide. Although I would really like it if the Florida flag fish actually uh, would do his job that I hired him for. We'll see. Uh, also, these angels are getting big enough. Look at this guy. He He from... I mean, he's bigger than I can do my, you know, my index finger and my thumb that I can stretch them apart now when he's fully extended. I got him when he was maybe silver dollar from tip to tip and a quarter, like his body was somewhere between a nickel and a quarter size. He's lost all his yellow and pink pretty much, but now he's like bronze and silver. And this yellow one's gotten more yellow, so I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm waiting for one or two of them to pair off, or, or I should say two or four of them to pair off. And then once that happens, I'm going to move some of them over to the other tank over there, since it's got lots of room. Sergio's not in it right now. Uh, and then also, uh, I was going to say, uh, so, oh, some of the other plants that I really dig are doing really well, too. So I'm excited about that. Um, the, uh, what is it? The Persa, uh, Persicaria uh, Sao Paulo. I said that wrong. It's not Persicaria. It's per, uh, 
any case, don't worry about it. Uh, everything's doing pretty good plant-wise in here, except for some of the stuff that has the black beard on it. And definitely, you notice certain plants get it. I've noticed that Bulbitis, in particular, gets it first, gets it bad, and it actually seems to get cyanobacteria really badly, too, oftentimes. Anubius is another one. It's a slow grower, and uh, the light on it like that is not necessary really and so it can fuel uh, it can't grow as fast as as it should so to speak and then also back here we've got the purple vietnam rotala that is grown to the top or pink rotala whatever you want to call it we've got the colorado uh stuff <laughs> stuff um that is the Bacopa. And then the uh, Sunset Vietnam Rotala up here starting to turn a nice peachy orange color. So let's get this going real quick. Then we can answer some questions. We can chat. We can have fun. We can uh, put blood worms in the mouth of a fish and all laugh and have a happy time. And I can show you the macro stomas downstairs. So let's take a look at these blue rams again. Uh, I asked for a male and two females, ideally, but it looks like I may have gotten all males. Can't tell they've lost their color. We were trying to guess by the roundness and then the spot uh, not having blue uh, dots on it, yet when I get them home now, they look like they all might have blue dots. None of them have pink bellies, uh, and they all have kind of pointy... Uh, fins up front their third pectoral ray uh is pretty pointy i don't know it's it's a toss-up on some of these they're pretty young they're not they're they're just over an inch this one has very uh poor color right here so we thought oh that might be a female right off get go but who knows what will happen she's got she actually does have a little pink to her belly so we'll see but I'm going to put these guys into this tank. This should be the last of who goes in this tank. Um, and remember, things are coming out. Corys are going to be coming out. I'm going to be selling Corys uh, from here. I may even remove the bulk of the Corys because they really are. They totally ruined all my baby, uh, you know, my all, all hopes of doing any sort of uh, carpet. Totally. So, hold on one sec. I know you guys aren't looking at anything fun, but let me scoop these rams out of the water they're in and get them into the tank. All right, we got, we got two of them in here. So, in, I don't want to let this go into the water, though. So, two go into the water, one comes out. Two go in, one come out. Come on. No, it's the wrong way, guys. Yeah, you've even got a little hut over here. Follow your bliss, uh, as Peck Tech would say. All right, so I don't want this dirty water. Well, not dirty, but this water from the pet store in my tank. It's just not my ecosystem. So, uh, yeah. But let's take this bag out. I'm sorry you're looking at the wall, guys. I know, I know. It's not exciting. It's not fun. All right, here comes the next ram. Are they called rams because they just ram into the back of the net? All right. So if you guys have an opinion of whether I have a female here at all, let me know. This one, wow, this one's really coloring up. Just just being in here for a few seconds, uh, this one is turning really yellow, and that's very cool. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, it was hard to tell at the store. Everything was under a red light, too, uh, like a Phoenix with a piece of plastic over it at Aquarium Co-op. But, of course, we all tried our best. I don't know a ton about blue rams. I haven't had them since I was pretty young, actually. Um, I had some Bolivian rams that I liked. I know they're pretty similar, but I also know that the blue rams are have been bred in captivity for a long time. Uh, so they, there are some different quirky traits about them. Uh, there's some, I guess, inbredness that you might say. Uh, but I'm hoping maybe that they will, uh, I've got some little smaller huts for them too that I can put out. 
but maybe maybe as they grow this will be an okay size uh little hut for them to take over there's are there are the plecos but only one pleco male seems to be taking over let's pour out this water i'll show you guys pretty much the last stop before i cut it um so bye bye water by the way i had a birthday i'm 40 million years old makes me what eocene i don't know what it makes me so this thing crazy this is uh hygrophila sunset uh and you can see it is when i stand i can touch the ceiling with it basically and it is gonna be cut now because it's just it can't support its own craziness so it won't have to all right but it is growing out of this and now all these other shoots are growing and they're all intertwined and in this if you didn't know just while we're over here this is literally how i take care of this there's no heater there's no filter i don't change the water i just top it off i go Bleh, like this and that's it i don't put food in it and there's just shrimp in there and there's neocaridina shrimp and there are uh Malawa shrimp and both have had babies they've been here over a year it's bizarre there's even shrimp in here too now uh i just put them in there when i saw one that i thought had elobiopsidae in that little jar and uh it, i guess it lived so um you know what let's go look at the macrostoma because that's what i promised i hope i don't lose you guys you guys know how it goes when i go downstairs sometimes if I lose you, I'll try to restart again. Sometimes I lose you for good. Hopefully that's not gonna happen. No one's home at the house streaming uh, simultaneously with me. So also you can see here, I'm moving out uh, and cleaning out some food, some substrate. This five gallon is, or 10 gallons getting moved, 15 gallons stay. Uh, the 20 long, it's getting moved. These guys are getting sold uh, soon. And they're just chilling right now. Uh, and then right here in the half beak tank, because they hang out pretty much just at the top, that's where we're going to put these macrostoma. So these are thanks to Chase Canton, who is in the uh, comments. He's in the, he's in the chat right now. And these are going for like, what, 100 to $140 at local fish stores. And they are, I mean, they're very beautiful. They're one of the larger, if not the largest betta, I think. They're a labyrinth fish, so they can gulp air, they can breathe air. Uh, actually, when you when you have them uh, have babies, you'll leave some space and put saran wrap or a lid over so that it's humid. They like warm water, they're from, um, Brunei, which is a specific little uh, little country. It's actually a Buddhist country. Uh, and uh, I think there's some Islam and stuff there too. But it's a weird little country on the island of uh, Borneo, is it? No, maybe it's not Borneo. No, it is Borneo. And then Sarawak is the Indonesian, or Malaysian, I should say, part of the island, I think. And then there's an Indonesian part. I don't know. I'll show you the geography later if you really care. But, long story short, there is this little hermit kingdom that still has a true king and queen. And they, uh, they actually are like a, a, an empire. And these guys are called... Uh, burn eye beauties sometimes because of how beautiful they will get like in the picture they are mouth brooders which is really cool uh, and then hold on look, let's get them in here I'm sorry guys this is boring until I get them in here all right so this tank's been set up a while it should have I mean it's got a lot of tannins we've got Malaysian driftwood in here uh, the male is in He's the one who looks like a grumpy bulldog. And then the female who looks like a striped, beautiful little girl. Uh, she's now in. We've got catapa leaves, which will give tannins to the water. 
Uh, we've got this filter here that actually I'm going to angle it and I'm going to crank up the air on it so that it'll have way more flow. And then uh, let's, let's get this bag with the extra water out of the way as well. But they have this nice piece of wood in here as well to kind of hang out under and then I'm planting it. I'm switching the light out so this light will be moved and it will just be a probably this light which is a much dimmer light a lot more relaxed that's how they live in the wild is in more shady areas now they live in streams and the, at the top of waterfalls i mean how's that for specialists uh in the still areas of the pools but alongside those pools there's swift areas and the the bed is good thing I showed you guys them before I put them in the tank because I probably won't see them for a week now. They're probably gonna just be hiding until I feed them black worms and blood worms and things like that. But what I wanted to tell you before I go on about the rest of their history and interestingness is that Chase Canton. I saw these fish today. I went to Aquarium Co-op to get those rams and the flagfish. Those were on they, those they were selling those for what was I a hundred or a hundred and forty I can't remember a pair if anybody knows offhand let me know, and uh, the uh, let's see here I'm gonna get a cover for this aquarium soon too just so people know, um, but uh, Chase is selling them for a hundred dollars flat for a pair so. Chase, uh, Chase has uh, a magic touch, and he has been able to breed these very rare bettas. These are the Holy Grail of bettas. I mean, just look up some videos on them. When they are breeding or brooding, uh, they've got spawn in their mouth, and the, the male and female trade eggs back and forth. And the male, for a month, keeps his mouth closed with all the little babies in there, and it's just... It's a really fascinating process to watch. Oh, she's already coming out. Cool. Uh, so it's a really fascinating process to watch. Uh, plus, they get pretty good size, and they're just beautiful. Now, they are a little aggressive, but not, like, crazy aggressive. It's kind of like uh, the rule of if it fits in the mouth, it ships into their stomach. Uh, but Chase, as I said, hit him up because it's 40 dollars per fish and then he's paying for shipping so it comes out to a hundred dollars total for a pair which is crazy you're not going to find that anywhere and so uh hit him up over that if you've been looking for it i know a lot of you have been looking for uh beta macrostoma now let me pour out the rest of this water into this five gallon it's all going outside anyways or the water is and uh Right here, this tank, uh, even though the Val is growing back uh, very slowly, this was the tank that was nuked by the Vibrio and then had all the meds put in it. It has had the heaters off and the the filter and everything, the, the HOB and the, the sponge filters. You know what sucks is I had two extra sponge filters sitting here getting ready, uh, like, as my backup filters, and I, you know, of course they were in this tank. Uh down here, the panda gar or the panda loaches. There's only a couple left. As I said, they got sick when everything else got sick. Really a bummer. Uh, let's see here. All right. Oh, thank you so much, Fish Dreams, for saying happy birthday. I really appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Preston John says, I like my macrostoma around 70, 75. Uh, he says he keeps them, uh, Chase, who got me these, he uh, he keeps them at 70 to 72. Hello, Jamie Lee. No need for flow. Uh, they like a little bit of flow um, in their water. I mean, I don't think you need it either, but in, in the wild, they do have a little bit of flow in their water. They, they live in acidic with leaves, streams with gravel so they have tannins in there but they also have some tds because of all the leaves in the rainforest that fall in but it's dark uh so yeah uh let me keep keep 
read these. You guys are talkative tonight. That's great. Uh, so, yes, Chase, who's in here, is the breeder. If you guys want to get a hold of him, get a hold of him. He's also on Facebook. He's in the U.S. He's in Seattle right now. He uh, are he is trying to breed them, you know, sustainably, locally, all that jazz. And uh, basically, it comes out to forty dollars a fish uh, for a female and a male. That's a pair, and then he's gonna ship them. So it's a hundred bucks, which is a really great deal. Uh, he hooked me up, I must say, not that he's like an official sponsor or anything, but he hooked me up with these as a gift, and thank you very much, Chase, that was very kind of you. I am really excited to play around with these fish. I'm wondering if they will be able to fit a half beak in their mouth. No, they won't, but I'm, I'm gonna watch them a little bit at first. Half beaks are really quick, um... So I'm not that worried about them. Uh, but then up here, we've got my... These are the Blue Dreams from Lucas Bretts. You can see, I'm going to actually call this colony really hard. And I'm just going to leave... Yes, they can be jumpers. Uh, I don't know how bad of jumpers they are. But they can also breathe air, too. They are a labyrinth fish. And they like humid air. So I've read some places that it's good to have... Um, yeah, the, the shrimp in here, they're dead. It's okay. I just added some Malawa shrimp because I had so many to eat the uh, the kind of like slimy film that comes from wood. You can kind of see the tank after it cycled. I put this wood in and it got kind of, you know, the slime that driftwood gets when you put it underwater and that the side of the tank gets like its first run of algae. Yeah, so they're serious uh, jumpers, says J.H. J.H., it's good to see you. Yeah, it's wood fungus. It's like the tannins in the wood. So the more tannic the wood, uh, the more you get this white, stringy film. Uh, and so I put shrimp in there, and they all ate it in a matter of two days, basically. But now I'm just going to leave them in there, and the, uh, the bettas can have at them. Because I don't have any blackworms right this second. And I would love them to just chomp down on the shrimp. Uh, I don't even see the shrimp. I put, like, 15 in here. I don't know where they are. Maybe they ate them already that quick. Uh, I don't see them. But, yeah, I I mean, I'm I'm not... I don't care if they breed. Like, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I sh <laughs> let me reword this. Stop. Rewind. I would like them to breed, but I'm not, like, super caught up on breeding them right now they're still pretty young i just would like to have them watch them see them i would love to watch them mouth brood though at some point but they will probably be in a bigger tank than a 10 gallon when i do that they get pretty big and they like more space this is just for while they're young probably put them in a 20 long with some like you know rasboras or something uh over here we've got the baddest still the baddest cat in town. Uh, and then the blue shrimp. Like I said, these are from Lucas Brett's from years ago. And Oh, do we have a pregnant one? We do. We have a buried one. So after these babies are born, I'm going to call again. And I just want strong stripes. I'm going to try to only pick not even like I'm going to call even that one. But I want just the ones with these triple blue stripes there's about eight of them that have them in here right now and then there are about i don't know 30 baddis in here and maybe 10 baddis are adults and then the other 20 to 25 are the little babies the little babies uh and they're all eating vinegar eel see here's another shrimp up here so some of these shrimp uh now that they're on a lighter substrate their turn you can really see their defects like this one here how clear that is in the middle uh or this one its tail's not very blue its legs aren't blue so that doesn't pass my uh scratch and sniff test unlike these ones down here which are my go-to like they're so dark blue most of them uh there's one in there that needs calling for sure the, like that's the color I love where, where only with the LED right on top of it can you tell that it's got a saddle on it some of them are so dark blue all over legs and antenna and everything 
that you can't even tell when they're buried, and that's fine with me too. Sorry, I know it's dirty right now on the glass, but uh, that's what the shrimp like, and if there's baby shrimp all over the tank, uh, I leave it as it is. So, yeah. Uh, other than that, we've got these guys, the koi. Uh, this is a second generation. So I separated the ones who don't have as much uh, dark color on their bodies, or for the females, they don't have dark uh, or colorful orange faces or fins. Uh, they're in this tank. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I might even just give them away or sell them very cheap, trade them to a store. And then over here in this tank, we've got obviously all the Malawa shrimp, the Caradina, uh, uh, gold nebulas, and then we've got a few of my favorite select of the uh, koi endler slash guppies. Now you can see the males, ideally, are dark with the huge orange fins, and it seems like I can't catch a break with them like most of them won't have like if they have dumbo ears like this guy down here they'll be light blue or something which is okay that's fine he's a pretty good example of what i want actually uh but i want him more dark and uh these are the females believe it or not they're still this colorful and so that's why i'm keeping them separate from the other ones now if you were curious how my Malawa shrimp were doing, and my... Look how blue some of these Malawa shrimp are. They're just, like, phenomenally colored, some of them. There's a, a galaxy right there. So that's a... Or a gold nebula, sorry. So the gold nebulas, they look very similar, except they have that white banding on them. It's like a calcification. And when you... When the, the lights are off, they they uh, stay kind of this... this opaqueish color whereas the other ones turn are, are completely clear and you can see yellow in them the Malawas and the Malawas turn more colors whereas the uh, the gold nebulas they've always got this reflective gold hue uh, on them on the little specks there they're probably very closely related but they don't seem to interbreed as far as I can tell but you can see how they how the Malawas uh, blend in pretty well on their different surfaces also uh the some are uh some fongsy resboras are in here three of them there's also one pandagar i don't know why he's in here alone but he is and he's the best colored pandagar i have in any of my tanks uh he is the sweetest he will come like eat out of my hand and he's just awesome i love him um and then we've got the phoenix rasboras so some Fongsy Rasboras. Oh, and some half of my half beaks are also over here now. Just trying out two different situations to see where they want to spawn or uh, get pregnant. A lot of erythromicrons. We've got uh, a batch of about probably 30 babies happened. So they're in here and just running all over the place. But they're very shy. Um, let's see here. Can we see any more hiding? They'll come out. Um, we'll feed them in a sec. But man, look at all these. Look at all these little buggers. There's just... Look at that blue one there. Another blue one. Uh, I did have blue Neocaridina in here. But uh, according to everyone on the internet, there's no way in hell that they could have crossbred. Uh, not even an infertile one. I don't know. I'm skeptical. I, I'm wondering if they could. Whoa, you are a jerk, Mr. Pandagara. Uh, okay. So let's feed this tank. Let me look at some comments. Sorry, guys. I'm neglecting you. Uh, Ginger, how's it going? Also, you know what was great, uh, was that, uh, get some water sprite for your bettas to breed in a bubble nest in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Max don't do bubble nest. Uh, yeah, they're they're mouth brooders. The macrostoma they they do, uh, literally like, oh weird. He's got like big stripes now. 
Interesting. See, he's got that big jaw like a bulldog, though. Um, they're going to continue to color up as they settle in. But um, let's let's see. I'm curious. Chase, I, I'm going to try this without asking if they do it yet, but we'll find out. Let's do some flu ball. Well, I've got options here. Let's do flu ball, tropical fish, uh, black fly pellets. Let's give that a go. See if there's any interest in them. Now, I have to break these up. Sorry, guys. I have to break these up a little bit because my half beaks are dum dums and they will choke on anything that I put in there that's too big for their little silly mouths so grind that up just a bit let's see half beaks love this stuff doom and he'll like get five or six pieces in his mouth when he plots a course are the bettas gonna eat any of it or am i gonna oh they do right on okay so i won't have to feed them all live food and then wean them off that's great okay so good news now let's feed these guys some everybody sorry about the filming work right now guys i probably shouldn't feed and talk and live stream and ruin everything all at once so I want to skate, rescape this tank as well. Um, those golden uh, wrestling half beaks sure look pretty. Uh, they sure do. Uh, the other thing, look at how voracious they are, though. They just want so much food, and they will just choke on the big pieces of food sometimes. And like I said, they use their body like a, a battering ram, and they'll just swim straight into chunks of food. Look at... Not okay, dude. You can't fit that in your mouth. Well, at least he gave it up. Usually they'll try and try and try uh, and can actually die from it because they're so persistent. Uh, over here, you're going to recognize some of my fish from upstairs. It's a little crowded here. We're going to have to downsize this tank for sure. Th these guys feed very aggressively. Uh... Just everybody in this tank is a jerk face. And they, they'll, if they get the chance, they will hit the top of the water hard. Uh, especially if it's like a floating flake food rather than tropical fluval bug bites. Uh, let me, I, I set aside, oh, here it is. So now, um, over here, over here, over there, over everywhere. So here is Sergio. Sergio is not happy, even though he's in a bigger tank now. And he's got all this room to swim. But he wants to sit in the corner because he's scared of all of the little fish. So look at some of my albino tiger barbs. Look at this guy. Pig, he can't. There's no way he what it, he can't even eat anymore. Look at it's stuck in his mouth or her. I don't know. Just whatever. They've been eating my shrimp in here like there's no tomorrow. I had hundreds of shrimp in here, hundreds of these uh, shrimp, and I thought there's no way they could even put a dent in it. Like my garamis and my tetras and my danios. Nothing put a dent in it. Tiger Barbs and Sergio have eaten, in like five days, they've eaten hundreds of the shrimp. It, I mean, it's got to be hundreds. But that's okay. I mean, I wanted to put Neocaridina in here at one point. Anyways, we've also got the two Bettas. Um, we've got six Pandagaras. The saved uh, colony of Lucas Brett's uh, Leopard slash Tiger Endlers, the rainbow ones. And uh, everyone from upstairs who had the Levamisol poisoning, I had to put them under a fresh bucket of dechlorinated water and uh, kind of force water across them with a turkey baster. Um, all right, guys. So in here, 
I have pre-filtered water with, what does that look like to you guys? It's vinegar eels. So we've got vinegar eels on tap for all these guys. Uh, I can feed them that every day if I feel like it. Um, and pretty much I do. I mean, they seem to grow with it pretty good. Daphnia and stuff work well too. Um, oh no, is this a dead shrimp? What's going on, bro? What's going on? He's not dead. But he's not doing well. I don't... Weird. Okay. Well, maybe he's fine. I don't know. Shrimp are weird sometimes. Uh, but yeah. So, we're giving them all the... All the little vinegar eels. I've been selling some of the scarlet... Uh, baddest. We're gonna feed some of these guys. They love eating the live... Vinegar eels. I like to do vinegar eels one day, Daphnia the next. You know, just switch it up. And I've shown you guys before how I, I've got the bottles of vinegar eels and then I use like a cheesecloth uh, little thing. Uh, still doing that same thing. Also in here, so I have put the Tin Winnie Daniels as well as the... Um, the, uh, let's see, the, the Tin Winnie Dana, Daniels and the Samfongzi Rasboras were both in here after being fattened up alone in boxes in that tank, and, uh, the males and females separated. I fattened them up for a few weeks on live food, and then I let them in here for about four days each, and hopefully they laid eggs in a week or two, maybe three I'll start looking closer at this, but that's why I put vinegar eels in for now. Not going to hurt anything to do that. Um, and then right here, let's give these guys a little taste of something else. This thing's all clogged. i got to unclog that tonight. Um, and then lastly, let's see if the bettas even want vinegar eels. They're probably too small to bother with, right? Let's see. Maybe not, though. We'll see. We'll find out. There's a shrimp. Use a dumb shrimp. Let's find out. So. We shall see. Oh, here you are, dumb shrimp. Stop trying to eat such big pieces, little guy. Bra. All right. Everybody's fed. Everybody should be happy. All right. Now we can chat. We can we can have a fulfilling conversation between adults. Uh, everybody's got their food. Everybody's got their something. I'm liking this new filter. I am for ten bucks or whatever it was. It's a little tall, a little bulky, but I'll forgive them. I'm going to do a review on three kinds of cheap filters that I just recently bought. So I'll be doing that. I've also got the history of angelfish going down soon. I've got um, the history of epistos and people breeding them. Colonialism in the Congo and how... Uh, the Belgians and the Germans, uh, particularly, uh, stirred up hell there. And so, yeah, I'm working on some history stuff that I hope to get back to on the channel. We'll see. I don't know. I also need to sit down and tell you guys something serious in a minute if you've been sticking with me. Um, and hold on. All right, so we're going to feed some more of these Fluval Pleco and Catfish pellets. Um, yeah, the these guys will try to eat them, but they can't. The, uh, the Peclotea or um, uh, L-138s, L-134s, they all love 
these they're they're kind of like a meat based food essentially so they're a big a big hit let's give them a little bit of floating food too because that's what these angels want come on guys yeah 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 they'll actually eat out of my hands now but i need enough to get down into the ember tetras so that they are eating well the quarries will pick apart those pellets too and my freaking monte carlo no it's okay i'd rather have the quarries than the monte carlo i guess Stargrass is growing out of control. I didn't even know I had it in here. You know, one of them things. It's just one of those days when my leopard frog is coming out to eat. Just one of those days. That's the adult. He's about three and a half inches, maybe four. Um,. So I'm gonna let I'm not gonna like be near the glass. He'll get scared. Uh, but I'll let him feed, and we'll zoom in if I see that he's out. All right, let's see if the reed tetras and the see if anybody wants anything in this tank. So uh, yeah, we'll see here. Sergio is going to a new home. Just so you guys know, he's not staying down in that tank. Not staying in this one. He needs a bigger home. I love Sergio, even though he murders everybody. Um, this tank needs some replanning. It just got torn up uh, when I did the dumb spill. I'm just on a roll. But uh, let me get caught up on these comments. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, guys. Um, let's see here. Uh, Tsuki Cove, yeah, that's a channel, Pup314, th that's a, um, an interesting channel that I've been watching more, he's been doing a lot of lists, a lot of B-roll, uh, from other channels, I mean, it looks beautiful, but it, it's a lot of work, and, and what, like, I don't know if he asked, well, I don't think he does ask permission, because I actually saw one of my clips in one of his videos, I won't mention which one, but, uh, also, you can see the cribs, they're back to their snarky business. I kind of like that there's almost no one here because if those cribs, both pairs have babies or even one has babies, now they have enough room to uh, do their thing, raise their babies. And I just love watching them shepherd their babies around. Um, all right, Ginger, hello. Thank you again for being a mod. You're my fave. Um... Yeah, Chase has a Facebook you can message him on. Same name is there. Uh, and he's not shipping until a little bit warmer weather for the most part. But if you live anywhere near here, um, you should talk to him. Or maybe you can pick it up. Maybe there's an exception. I don't know. Whatever. Just doing Florida. Does anybody live in South Florida want to buy a 40 breeder with a stand and a lid? Uh, that's probably the wrong channel to ask just because of the number of people here and all that stuff. Um, let's see here. Tokes Outdoors, hello. Um, Fish Tropic, please stand by. Big City Bettas, hello. Uh, um, sorry guys, I'm just, you guys are talkative tonight, which is great. Um, so I guess I have cool news to tell you, not the coolest news for me and my fish room necessarily, um, but my wife and I, <laughs> Christy, thank you for loving Sergio, uh, my wife and I have just, and also Chara, uh, Dreamer, thank you for loving Sergio, uh, so, my wife and I are moving, uh, probably within 90 days. Um, and it's going to be interesting. We just got underwritten for a house. Um, so that should be exciting, but we'll have to move a lot. Uh, 
Uh, Chase says, uh, I sell pairs at 100 market is 200 a pair. Uh, and I give away a lot to breeders like Alex. Yeah, totally. He has done a good favor for the local region, people who are actually breeding and trying to take care of these fishies and share information slash widen the gene pool. Um, that's what he's about. Chase is a good dude. Uh, there's nobody I would, I really mean that there's nobody I would rather uh, recommend people spend money with as the local Washington State breeder of fish. Chase is just a great guy. Um, all right. So I should be staying in this area, by the way, guys. Um, I'll probably have to pack up my 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 uh, ticks, obviously. It's going to suck after I just get this set up and going. But um, it makes me wonder, should I even reset the tanks right now? Like, we have under, we are underwritten for a loan, and we have 90 days on that uh, underwriting. Um, and it's kind of scary, because if you guys know my story, know my life, uh, hold on, let me set this up so I don't have to make everybody sick like I have this far. If you made it this far and you're not vomiting and cussing me out, I mean, it's probably okay, but just for my sanity. Okay, so my wife and I, um, right now, I am, I'm working with YouTube. Uh, so YouTube, it doesn't pay great. You know, it's a couple hundred a month or whatever you make off YouTube, and you put a lot of time into it. But I love it. I love talking with you guys. I love the fish. I like getting free fish from places like Aquatic Arts that I also really support and would shop at anyways, slash did shop at, and they finally asked me, you want to just team up um you're buying a lot of fish so now i get them kind of at cost or a discount depending on the fish uh, but i do graphic design and i do fine art painting i guess i guess that's fine art it's fine i guess it's that kind of fine art like eh, it's fine uh like the rhinos like the uh giraffe and the tiger and the ram skull and the mountains. Um, so I do paintings, I do botanical illustrations, biological illustrations for the University of Washington. Mycology is a big, uh, sorry guys, this thing will stand up right. There we go. Uh, mycology is a big passion of mine. I got mushrooms, so I've done a lot of work with that for art. Uh, you can go to SomaInkDesigns.com to check out more of my art. Or Alexander uh, J. Williamson, uh, Alexander J. Williamson at Instagram. So Instagram.com forward slash Alexander J. Williamson. I think it's forward slash, forward slash, backslash, forward slash. I don't know. Uh, Fank Cantu, I bought more from Aquatic Arts. Well, I hope you got the discount because I think we're going to be doing a giveaway soon with them. Uh, we're still waiting on some things. They had some supply stuff. They're kind of retooling and getting bigger. They're starting to carry more cichlids. Uh, they had a bunch of cool Oscars. Um, and they, they tell everybody, like, these things get big. Don't buy them unless you have a dedicated tank. Um, but yeah, so I do, uh, I do graphic design. But lately I've been getting really, really tired. If, if you know me well, you know I got hit by lightning. A year and a half ago, a little over. Right now, tonight, I'm even fading uh, fast. Uh, fish dreams for the merchandise. I have a Teespring link that should be in the uh, description below. But then for my Instagram, that's not just fish. It's Alexander J Williamson. If you look for that on ins on Instagram, you'll find me. Uh, and then Soma, S-O-M-A-I-N-K, like SomaInkDesigns.com is my graphic design website. Like for um, when I do branding, when I do labels for, you know, I don't know, ginger beer or something. Uh, but yeah, so I've been doing that, been doing that work uh, when I can, but I've been very, very tired. 
Uh, I'm coming to the end of all my dental work. I have to say thank you guys for supporting the channel, for supporting me emotionally, with super chats, with ad revenue, just sharing. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, you guys. I never really thought that would come. I remember a video where I said, uh, I know if I do just nerdy history stuff, uh, I'll never make it over a thousand, but maybe if I do half nerdy history stuff and half updates and just try to throw in trivia while we talk, uh, maybe someday, years in the future, I could even hit five or ten thousand. Well, I remember that video. I remember Cor Corey at Aquarium Co-op mentioning uh, that when I was at a few hundred, you know, he was just like, you know, you, you better have your heart in this or don't do it at all, that kind of thing, you know. Uh, it's a lot of hard work. So it feels good that, like, it's it's taken time, and I'm glad it has because it makes me feel like I earned it. it. makes me feel like you guys have come on this journey with me, and it's just great. So uh, thank you for being a part of that. Now, the bummer news, when I got hit by the lightning, I got most of my teeth either pulled out I'm missing all the teeth here, and these are all fake, right here. Uh, missing one here, here, and I'm missing the molars up here. So I lost 19 teeth or had to get crowns, and uh, I buy my plants at aquaticarts.com or at hauntaquatics.com, usually, or a local fish store. So, teeth got knocked out. Spent 40 grand on my teeth uh, and surgeries. My jaw was broken, like hairline fractures in it. So the teeth were like crumbled in the root and actually I was losing them to abscesses. The ones that didn't get blown out from the initial blast. So after I got hit by the lightning, it burned out or during the hit, it burned out all this sinus tissue behind my cheek here and it actually I couldn't feel it because it cauterizes it's 50,000 degrees it's heat it entered through my hand and my face like this I was on the railing like this outside and it probably struck somewhere in here because bloody nose teeth were all blown out any teeth with fillings exploded and cut my mouth up other teeth blew out from above from the pressure in my sinuses it was so extreme and i had holes where the teeth were that were connected to the sinus it was gross it was horrifying um and actually i did like i looked okay i looked okay and uh did okay and then i had um swelling on the brain the next week uh, and started to like slur my words. I couldn't write any properly anymore and I was really tired. Uh, and I, it, you guys can go back and look at videos if you want, but I thought I was fine the first few days. And then I started finding like all these areas that were scarred up and, uh, the, the tissue had burned and I didn't know it just killed the nerves, burned the tissue under the skin or internally burned part of my liver. Good thing I don't drink alcohol. <laughs> uh, and then uh, part of my kidney as well. One of them. And it broke my back uh, at L5, S1, L4, and L3. As well as C4, 5, and 6 in between those. So two discs in between there were bulged. Uh, Long story short, I thought, okay, that stuff's bad. Made it through it. Back surgery, tons of dental surgery. Through through all this, you guys, and your help has been killer. The tank downstairs, the 40 gallon, was set up so when I would be in bed for weeks, I could have something right there next to my face in the guest bedroom to look at. So I'd go to my wife and I's room in the evening and then during the day when I still had to stay down most of the time I had the fish room kind of thing so uh, it all has a lot of meaning to me I want to keep it going uh, there's a lot of me in these tanks if that makes sense like 
it's not so much what's in them necessarily, but the energy that I put towards those things in them. Also, it's really helped with my sobriety a lot. I mean, I've I've haven't drank or uh, been a bad boy per se. And uh, you know, I should say like, okay, I've had morphine and things like that when I was in the hospital. I've I've had things in IV and whatnot, but then tried to get off things as quick as possible um, when they said that was advisable. Uh, but it was a momentary backslide. It kind of made me feel bummed, but I, it was too hard without it, uh, without the things, you know, without prednisone and uh, anti-inflammatories. Because I got into a stage before that where I didn't even want to take aspirin or anything. I was just nothing. So uh, now I'm a little more uh, open to... <laughs> I'll take an aspirin if I get hit by lightning, all right? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll take your morphine too if I get hit by lightning. Uh, so I'm just kind of beating around the bush. Sorry, guys. But uh, my wife and I have been trying to have a kid. This is on a personal note. This has nothing to do with fish. If you don't care about... If you, if you just wanted to hear about fish, it's done. Thank you. Please like, subscribe. I appreciate it. I'll be doing videos on, on those fish that I got. Uh, on different stuff uh, having to do with them and the tanks we looked at and I appreciate you but if you want to know just so I can tell you what's going on why my pace has been a little bit slower with the videos again uh, I've just been extremely tired and slurring my words feeling uh, run down and it turns out that um uh, my wife and I were trying to have a kid. My wife is 10 years older. I am 32. She's 42. Uh, putting a lot of this out there, and I know a lot of people would, but I feel like you guys are my friends and family. A lot of you really are my good friends that get me through rough times. And maybe someone else will feel something similar and not feel so alone or frustrated or scared or maybe I can help someone maybe they can message me or I can message them and learn something I don't know whatever it why ever I feel like putting it out there I, I don't know but uh we went to a child um or to a reproductive specialist wife was great they said she had the uh we did a uh ultrasound and uh and all sorts of tests and things. They said she had the body of a 25-year-old woman as far as reproductive system goes. Great. Uh, me, on the other hand, I wasn't... I'm not right now. I'm not producing any testosterone. I'm not producing any uh, progesterone, uh, estrogen. My, They thought it may have been the medications that they had me on at one point like the prednisone and things that could have damaged my thyroid and then was hurting precursor chemicals. Well, they did a bunch of contrast dye MRIs and uh, I have two permanent uh, lesions on the brain, like, or scars on the brain, I guess. One from traumatic force injury, blunt force injury um, on the forward side of my brain stem and then on the back side uh, I have one from electricity uh, burn and tissue dead so the MRI with the contrast dye with the blood flow now they know that my pituitary gland was hit when my sinuses blew out it broke my skull straight back so my, your pituitary is like back like in the center of like in your core like almost in your neck where your head and your neck meet uh, up from there. It's your brain stem. It's one of your reptilian parts of your body. Uh, it's fish. You know, you share your spinal column and your amygdala and um, all that stuff with them. And uh, my pituitary gland is it's uh, fried. It's totally not working as well as some of my other tissue around there. Um, I've been having insomnia really bad and um, just feeling tired. My cortisol levels are screwed up. 
really bad, so that makes the pain worse. Uh, not producing much adrenaline at all. So they need to get me on replacement therapies. The replacement therapies can render you infertile, just like when people use workout steroids and uh, hurt themselves that way uh, and can't have kids or whatnot. So there's stuff to consider. It only works. I have a window that they think it could work where we could maybe try to have a kid for three months worth of kind of tricking the system in this thing. We just met with the neurosurgeon and the uh, endocrinologist. And so we've got that window. We've got the window for a house, which is exciting. Feel very fortunate and grateful for a lot of these things. And I haven't worked a 40 hour a week job in a year and a half, a little over. And so uh, it's a little scary. Uh, Corey from Aquarium Co-op has talked about how he thinks a lot of channels will go away. I really hope that's not the case, but my energy is, uh, it's waning lately. Hopefully they can figure it out and I'll be doing better and I can juggle work and that, but right now, as it is, I've just been um, pretty useless a lot of the time. I have to take a nap for four or five hours. Hard to get to sleep that long, have to eat, and then I'm ready for you guys, and I try to uh, keep it together, keep uh, on the ball, but sometimes it's just not meant to be. Uh, tonight, I'm fading as we speak. I'm fading. Uh, but I wanted to let you know what's going on. Not a drunkie. I'd, I'd admit it if that were the case. Um, and I don't judge anybody who drinks or anything either. You do you. But for me, it wasn't good. Uh, but I've got a lot of hard stuff that I'm facing right now as far as decisions. And the cost of replacing all your human growth hormone and your HSG and your luteinizing hormone and your F. SH, I think. I, there's so much to learn. I need to research. But uh, we'll see. So, uh, and with all that, I have lupus and then my back broken in uh, or injured. Discs herniated or obliterated, quote unquote, uh, with pieces of bone, fragments all over. Uh, so, probably have another surgery. Might have more uh, surgery for implants for teeth. Uh, I don't know. We don't know what the future will hold, but you guys keep me going. You guys make me uh, want to keep going, make me do things interesting. I want to put together a, you know, a, an outline and a, more history videos. It's the secret history living in your aquarium, but... Uh, sometimes I have to do these more on the fly videos, uh, when, uh, my stamina and organizational skills and my, my mind isn't as clear. <laughs> so, uh, again, thank you for joining me tonight. I hope you guys are doing great. Uh, hopefully things are going to get better for me. Uh, I'm still so grateful for everything I have. My wonderful wife, my animals, my the, the living conditions I'm in, and that I can lean on my wife because I couldn't afford rent in Seattle alone right now, and you know, a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars in medical bills every month. Uh, and you guys have really helped, so thank you. Uh, that's all I got to say tonight. Uh, take it easy. I'll do a more chipper live stream later. Uh, and uh, take care. Take care of your critters. Take care of the people around you. And take care of yourself. Because you can't do the other ones if you don't take care of yourself. And uh, I think if half of us did half of that, our world would be twice as good. So uh, let's do that. Thanks, guys. Much love and appreciation. Uh, you can check out the links below if you want to support the channel, Patreon, uh, Super Chats, that sort of thing. And 
I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. So take care. Bye.